watercolor painting rainbow hummingbird. Welcome to drawing with Julie Gwynn. Today I'll be using this Arteza portable watercolor paint palette as well as a Stonehenge aqua cold pressed paper by Legion. As usual, I always do a light sketch of whatever I'm going to paint beforehand. Occasionally, you'll hear my three-year-old here in the background. She likes to pop her head in and see what I'm doing. I did make an outline again for you, so if you'd like to get the link, it is in the description below. If you'd like to either color this or use it as an outline for a watercolor project. Today I'm using this aqua ink by Graphics in the color Violet. And it is a beautiful pigment. It goes on very dark, but you can use it just like any watercolor so you can water it down. But if you put a line on and just pull it down, you get some beautiful gradient hues of purple. You can see I'm starting out here by putting down dark lines and then going in and pulling that dark line out to get the lighter hue in between. So you get, get a nice variant of color on the wings that way. Love these hummingbirds. I've done a few different versions of this um, so far. Some a little bit more loose. This one is not your typical loose version. It's kind of got outlines to it. So it just depends on your style as to what you like. So I'll go in here and show you the other ones. This one is a bit more loose and has a more abstract background. And you can see they're all a little bit different. And some I kind of detailed the edges more, some I didn't. There's so many different ways that you can paint watercolor hummingbirds. And this one I tried to do a little bit more like a real bird. I used a reference of an actual real hummingbird. And here's that reference that I used. When you look at reference images of hummingbirds, you'll see the way their feathers are. There's just so many different colors on these rainbow hummingbirds. So what I'm doing here is just kind of dabbing different colors in areas and then going back in and adding different shades in order to get that textured look of the different shades of feathers that clump together. go in with this pretty shade of lime green and kind of dab it just like I did under the beak there with the different shades of blue. Kind of give it that feathered texture just by tapping the end of the brush. I'm not doing your typical blending type brush strokes. I wanted to give it more of a feathered look so I'll just keep kind of tapping it here on the paper lightly. Here I'm making a more of a blue-green to blend in next to that lime green. So it goes from like a darker blue to a bluish green to the lime green as it goes down the bird. If you look at the different pictures of hummingbirds, they're all so different, but these rainbow hummingbirds especially, there's just so many different variations of the way that you can do these bright colors. And here I'm going in and just tapping in 
a little bit of this vibrant yellow in some of those white spaces that I left in the green. And that gives it a nice textured look. It's just like a rainbow. Then I mix kind of an orange color here, the red and yellow to go on the tail. And then I'll throw some more red in there to get that depth on the tail feathers. And like your typical rainbow, it goes from the tail to the beak, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. go back in with that dark purple on the bottom here and add some definition to the bottom of the bird. And add more definition to the purple on the wings as well. so vibrant and you can do so much with it. It goes really nicely on this paper. But the original purple is dry on the head. I'm going back in and kind of tapping some more purple to add another layer, give it that feathered texture look. Then I'll go in with some black around the eye. It has these little points around the circle on the eye. And then I'll do the black around the circle. Then I'll go around the feet and add some definition there. Basically, I go back in here and I want to add some depth and some more shading. So I get some darker greens. So you know the bottom of the bird's going to be a little bit more shadowed. So I throw some darker greens on there. And some brighter reds just to bring out that shadow on the bottom of the bird. You don't have to do this. I like to add a little bit more of a line detail. So I do go in and add, you know, more shading than you necessarily need to for a watercolor. Again, it just depends on your style and what you like. I did save the beak to kind of do for last, well, almost last, but go in and I did a darker line on the bottom and then I did that same technique clean your brush just get a little bit wet and then blend that up to get the lighter shade of purple for the, for the top of the beak Speeding up the last part of this a bit and go in here and fill in the eyeball and I do a little bit of the outlining with like a dark brown. I do that on the bottom and I kind of add a little bit of detail 
on feathers with like a darker brown and you'll see that on hummingbirds too it will have some sporadic little darker colors and around the feathers where it has some shading again that's completely optional some people like to throw the detail in and some don't and it's completely up to you could really be done here and just have the bird on the white paper background. That's not normally my preference. I like to go in and at least do some type of wash. You'll see here that I'm painting water on first, tapping in a lime green, and then tapping in a darker green with it to kind of give the essence of a greeny scenery behind the bird. want to be careful if your bird is still wet you don't want to do this you kind of want to wait till it's a little bit dry or be careful not to get the water against the wet paint on the bird or it's going to bleed into your background so it's better to play it safe and just make sure that the bird is mostly dry before you start doing a wash around him And I like to go around again with a darker green just around the outside sporadically here. Gives it a little bit more depth and kind of like a border around the outside of the paper. And here is the finished product on its mat ready to fly off to my daughter's room. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.